It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. What happens when a Holocaust survivor comes face to face many years later with the guard responsible for her punishment at the Dachau concentration camp? Find out on this edition of It's Supernatural! Three, two, one. If it's not natural, consider it's supernatural. How would you like to be age ten and a half? Poland, Hitler's Holocaust years, taken away from your family just because you're Jewish. How would you cope with it? Would you leave the concentration camp after you saw all of your, or most of your extended family wiped out and curse Christianity, want to firebomb churches because you believed that's who was responsible for the Holocaust. Our guest was just in that position. Janie, I'll put you in that position. Age 10 and a half, Poland, Hitler invades. You leave your parents. I mean, just picture yourself. You, uh, you, you, you leave everything and you're working maybe 10, 12, 15, 18 hours a day seven days a week, you didn't do a thing, how would you feel? I would be full of hate, and I would be screaming every second and say, someone has to help me. Rose Price, before we get to that, what was Poland like as a little girl before Hitler invaded? Uh, what, what, tell me uh, a remembrance of a Shabbat dinner. Mm, that's special. Because I come out from a very, very orthodox family, very religious. And Friday afternoon, we would take our Shabbat dinner to the bakery to bake it, and it's called a chulent. Uh, my grandmother and my mother, they would start preparing for the Shabbat on Wednesday to bake the challah, make the fish, make apple cake. The, the challah is the bread. Challah is the bread, special bread. It's delicious. And, oh, it's, yes. You, it's like a knots. It's neat. It is. And it's like an egg bread, actually. A lot of countries use it as a coffee cake. And uh, that was on a Friday, uh, 12 o'clock. Everybody stopped working. Everybody was bathing and putting on a special Shabbos dress and getting ready for the Shabbat. Father would come home, then he would go, he would get dressed, he would go to the synagogue. When he came home from the synagogue, we would have the dinner. That's Friday night. Tell, tell me about family. Were many members of your family there gathered around the Shabbat table? Were family close back then? We had, I came out of a blessed family. We were so close with one another because you see, said there is that's a ten year old is responsible for an eight year old, a twelve year old, for a ten year old. And down the steps and when you are responsible for somebody's safety, you you have to love that person to protect them. Would would love be the right word for oh, it, yes. for your family? And did you have yes. uh, like Uncles, aunts, uh, all uh, gather. One, gra or? one grandmother had nine children, my mother's mother. And one grandmother, we are still debating the fact that it's either 13 or 16. We, we're not sure. <laughs> Rose, let's take you yeah. to, um, you, you, you had to leave home. You're on your own. You went to how many concentration camps? Six. And it started at nine and a half? Ten and a ten half. Ten and a half? Yeah. How, how, do, how, do, you well, ten, so, how do you function at ten and a half? How do you function at ten and a half like you that? You really don't. You really don't because 
All my life I was told I'm doing good, I'm doing good in school, and I was petted, and I was hugged, and I was kissed, and I was given a candy because I came home with good marks. And all of a sudden, here I am told I'm no good, I'm a parasite, I shouldn't be taking up the, the place of this earth. Did you believe that? Oh, yes. After a while, you do believe it. You fight it in the beginning, but then you become like a zombie and you believe everything they tell you. Let, let, let's take, you, you went to a couple of the worst concentration camps that, that yes. were around. Um, we read about experimentation on people. Did you witness that? Were you experimented with? I was experimented weather-wise. What do you mean? Uh, we were undressed, put in snow, waist high. I wasn't that big, and so the waist was very low, and the, high, the snow was very high for me. And every hour or every couple of hours, somebody would come and take the blood. What the experimentation was is to see how long it takes for the blood to freeze. And the reason I survived that is because many people fell around me, and their bodies kept me warm but my toes and my fingers did freeze. Sid, I have a question. Yes, I, Janie. I'd like to know, I'd like to find out from Rose, did she fight back with these people? Did she scream at them and say, stop doing this to me? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, there, there are a lot of people that accuse the Jewish people of not fighting back. Did you? Okay, let me give you an example how we could fight back. I was picked out twice to be shot, not because I'd done something, but because once I was number five and once I was number four. It's just random numbers. Right. To they be decided shot. I that morning which number they're going to run mm -hmm. or pick, rather. I was chained from my neck, my waist, and my ankles to the people in front of me and the people in the back of me. How could I run away? I did after the chains came down after the guard unlocked the chains, I ran away. What but happened? I didn't have how I didn't have to go very far because the people would turn us back in and then we would get killed. You were telling me that one time you smiled and what happened to you? I walked across the camp and I smiled with somebody. I was talking, I don't know why, I don't know what about it was. And because a guard saw me smiling, he put me into a tank of live sewer, and I had to stand in it for 24 hours. You, uh, how high was the, the, was the, the garbage? The water was coming up almost to my mouth, so I had to stand on my toes. For 24 hours? For 24 hours. You must have really hated. Oh, yes. I had good reason to hate. I said, I come out of a loving family. I knew what anti-Semitism is. I was called every name in the book by a Polish people. I was hit over the head by a, with a cross by a priest because I'm a Jew. So I knew what anti-Semitism is. I knew I wasn't liked. I knew I was different. Did you feel that somehow Christianity um, was responsible for the atrocities that occurred at that time? Oh, yes. Every Saturday afternoon, we would be marched up to the upper room. And that's what they called it. And, every, and that was the entertainment for the soldiers. What do you mean? We would uh, be tied up by our wrists and hung from the ceiling and swung about and whipped or hit or put on stretch tables. And every time this was done, the guards would say, well, we are not doing it, but Jesus Christ is doing it. Remember, you killed him, and we'll you be did back. it. We'll be back in just a moment with Rose Price, and you're going to find out how she found out that it was not Jesus that was responsible. Don't you dare go away. The 
is shocked and outraged when her Jewish family believes in Jesus. Next, but first, this. Rose Price, a Holocaust survivor, lost most of her extended family. Rose, how large was the family that you, you lost under Hitler? A lot, an awful lot. Fifty? A hundred? Oh, yeah. And they, they were large families back then. We were, yeah. I come out of a very large family. You lost one family, and you felt it was because of Christianity at oh, that yes, time. Oh, yes, definitely. And then you established a new family in America, yes. uh, active with the synagogue. In fact, uh, you very, were president, I believe. Yes, I was. Of, of, was it the Women's Association of the For synagogue? The Women's Sisterhood, the an sisterhood. orthodox synagogue. And, in fact, you were right across the street right from across, it. Right across, yes. And one day, your daughter, Miriam, mm -hmm. your oldest daughter, came home and said, what did she say? Mommy, mommy, I believe in Jesus Christ. He is the Jewish Messiah. And what did you say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really, I was but so wait, wait, you, you, you didn't train her well. She didn't have a good Jewish background. Well, she did. She went to Hebrew school because I helped build a Hebrew school. She was educated in Hebrew and Judaism. So how could she say such a thing? I was asking her that. <laughs> so, and, so, so tell me what was going on. And I was, I was distraught because this was the enemy of enemies to me personally. In his name, the Holocaust. In his name, I lost my family. In his name, I lost my childhood. I didn't have a childhood. I didn't have a teenage life. I lost education. I lost a lot because of him. And he is my own bl blood, my own flesh coming home to my home. Well, anyway, I, I tried to reason with her, and that's when the first time I told her what had Jesus did. You mean you, had kind of, you weren't able to say it before? Oh, I could never say it. I was too much About ashamed of it. Yeah. Uh, we feel very much guilty that we survived. And I finally sat her down and I told her what her Jesus did to, to me, so why she, she doesn't have family like I did. So did she renounce Jesus? Oh, no. She became stronger. And, 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 and then, I understand not only your, your daughter, but then your younger daughter became a believer and your, your husband became husband, a believer. That, that uh, was the so worst. You, so you marched across the street to the synagogue. Did the rabbi help you? Oh, yes. He helped me convince that I should read the Bible. What do you mean? Explain. Well, because he would give me scriptures. My rabbi was a very educated man. He was an Israeli. He was orthodox. I mean, this is what, mm -hmm. where I come from. And uh, I finally went into the Bible because he would give me scriptures and they, he would give me five. They would give me 25. He, he would give me another scripture. He, uh, and I would come home all I, ready. I have to ask you, as upset as it was that your, your family believed in the Messiah at being Jesus, why did you stay? Oh, I tried to go and leave. Well, I threw my daughter out, and then she came back when my husband accepted the Lord. But I tried to leave, and I called my lawyer, and he says, you can't leave because they're going to pick you up for desertion of minus. Now, I don't know where he got that law from. Because I was checking around. So you were around. kind of stuck there. I was there. stuck. Well, I was... Well, didn't you tell them, at least don't witness to me? Oh, they knew not to witness to me, because I would throw out every Bible through the windows, right into the garbage can. But you said they, they kept giving you scriptures? They kept... They, constantly, I found pieces of paper with scriptures. And I couldn't fight them any longer, so I took the Bible down to the basement. And I started reading to prove my daughter wrong, especially my husband. I mean, I know he was absolutely wrong. Well, how about something like the 53rd chapter of Isaiah? That's pretty convincing. Yeah, but the rabbi said a Jewish woman doesn't read that. And that's when he threw me out of the synagogue because I went in there and I said, look, who is this talking about? And he said, a Jewish woman does not read this and you're not allowed to uh, be here anymore. You are one of them. Did you try another rabbi? I tried a couple more, and they all told me the same thing. Because in the neighborhood I lived, 
in Philadelphia. It was all Jewish, and they all knew about the Jesus freaks because this is what the newspaper called the kids. And uh, I, I don't understand. Why wasn't the rabbi more sympathetic to you? I mean, after all, you well, helped build the synagogue. He, wa he was very sympathetic to me. He told me I live in a house of death. I know, but when you read <laughs> Isaiah 53, he got upset with you. He got very much upset with me. Sid, because I'd like to know, I mean, didn't that make her think then maybe Jesus is the Messiah? I mean, a reaction like that, that's almost like a cover-up. Well, it got bothered me, and this is why I picked up the Bible to prove the rabbi wrong. <laughs> and now I had a whole group against me. And then, really, God got your number. One yes. of the wealthiest men in Philadelphia, a successful yes. businessman, invited uh, a number of Jewish people over to hear the good news, of which mm -hmm. you were one, and you wanted to see his beautiful house, so you went yes. there, <laughs> and he asked you a could he pray for you? What did yeah, he say? Yeah, he said to me, he says, because so many people wanted to pray with me, and I didn't believe in prayer. I didn't even believe in God at that time. I gave God up yes, in the, the camps, yeah. and I couldn't renew, uh, retake him. And this man comes over and he says, well, can I pray with you? And I said, no. And he says, do you mind if I pray? And I just told him, you could stand on your head. I don't care. It's your house. I mean, real smart mm -hmm. alecky. I asked his forgiveness. And he, this man started to pray. And now you know Jewish people never close their eyes. Right. And I closed my eyes, and it was 10 o'clock in the evening. I don't know where I was between 10 and around 2 o'clock in the morning. We, but something happened. What happened? Well, <laughs> except that the Lord, that's one thing. And the other thing what I know is like the biggest... Rose, wait a... You, what? you said you accept the Lord just like that. I mean, with all the junk and awful things that and you all went the years through, and how all could the you just months? do that in an instant? A completely in an instant. How? I didn't. He did. He was waiting for me, you see? <laughs> We're going to be right back. Don't you go away. <laughs> In a moment, hear about Rose's encounter with a former guard who was in charge of torture at her prison camp. But first, this. Rose Price hated so much because of the years that the devil took from her in the Holocaust, because of the lost lives of her family, cousins and uncles and aunts, 90, 100, who knows how many. She hated. She had to go through 27 operations. I believe, Rose, that were caused by hate. Yes, they are. Every operation I had, the root of it was unforgiveness. And you became a believer. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you, you, you have what we call chutzpah. Oh, nerve. yeah, double dose. And, and you, you, you told people about that you're not ashamed that Yeshua is our Messiah. Right. Um, and I didn't even realize this, Rose, but we became friends, and I mm -hmm. found out about an event in Berlin, Germany, uh, right. called Berlin for Jesus. It was, mm -hmm. I believe, in 1981. Yes. And I said, Rose Price would be perfect for that event. Uh, and I called you on the phone, and I was shocked and angry. You told me you would not do it. Of course not. I and should I go said, back to Germany. And I, I said, pray about it. And you, you still dug in. Uh-huh. For six months. You called me in January. And why, why didn't you want to go back to Germany? Oh, how could I? Sid, Germany and forgiveness were not on the same planet. Yeah, but you're not you're the same a, well, two no, no. words. You're a believer in the Messiah, and the Messiah it says, I'll matter. forgive That's... you the same degree you forgive other people. Wait a minute, but this is the Holocaust. I forgive you. Yes, Sid, you hurt me. I forgive you. The Germans? No. That's a separate entity. That's not the same. So why did you come with me? Because he made me. <laughs> he hogtied me and put me on the plane, kicking and screaming. Who's he? The Lord. 
Tell when me, I, now, now, the Emmets, the truth. The on truth the plane, is, as on you're the headed plane. there, what's going on in your stomach? My stomach was walking out of me. I was on more pain medication. I was on more uh, nerves. I, I was sitting and holding my stomach in because I was afraid it's going to walk out. And in my brain, and you know, the enemy comes in quite strong when you have a doubt. I mean, he really feeds into it. And in my brain says, how can you even think of going back? How can you even think, what will your mother say? How will your dead relatives, they're going to come up, they're going to be ashamed of you. They're going to turn in the graves. How can you go? How can you talk to those Germans, what they have done, the atrocities, how they have treated you? Rose, I'm going to take you right now to the Colosseum in Berlin. This is the Colosseum that Adolf Hitler, yes. for 1,000 years, we will be the master race. This is the Rhein one where, he's, where, where, he, where he had his, his greatest campaigns. Mm -hmm. I personally was shocked when I went into that Colosseum. I saw a young German youth that loved Jesus with right. stars of David, Mogan yes. Davids, around their head. <laughs> and I didn't have uh, mine. Uh, 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 with chains. I saw. Uh, Israeli flags throughout mm -hmm. that stadium. You know who was turning in his grave? It was Adolf Hitler. Oh, that's definitely. <laughs> that's cool. But you but, see this we but, know later, later. But as you were going up to the platform to address that stadium full of Christians as a Holocaust survivor, again I say to you, what was going on inside? Don't go, don't talk, run. Get a gun, a machine gun, them, at least five rows. It's hard to believe us. That's what you I. Really that's what I was thinking. Could, so what did you yeah. say? When, when I said in my speech or to in myself. Your speech, in your speech. In my, I really don't remember that much what I said, but the way I understood is that I forgive you, for the Lord has forgiven me. And when you and finished, and the Dachau guard yeah. came to you. The former Dachau concentration camp guard came to you. What did he say? Forgive me for what I have done. He walked up, he, he was seeking you out. And yeah. were you and able to? No, I wanted to break his neck because he knelt down at my feet. What and happened in Dachau? Well, he, he was in charge of punishment. And Ooh. he would put me in, not just me again, but a lot of us and he would walk on us, put us face down into the mud, and walk on us so he wouldn't get his feet dirty, his boots dirty from the mud. So that's what went, on, what went on in your head, we understand. What we were thinking about, we understand. What did you say to him? After a while, I finally said, if Jesus forgave you, I forgive you. And it's such a poignant story, he, he, uh, uh, one, one, one of the guards, came after you just as you were ready to leave Germany, and, right. and what did he say? He said that's the first time he slept through the night since the war, that he didn't sleep throughout the war. And when he had to hear my voice saying again, that's I forgive him. Rose Price. Yes. Today. Yes. Honestly, do you forgive the German people? Oh, yes, definitely. From my kishkas. You know, kishkas are down here, from I know. way down here. I know, Rose. Let me tell you something. It is impossible to forgive those atrocities unless you recognize that you have been forgiven. Unless you know the Messiah, unless you have His power, unless you are filled with His love, you cannot do that. I tell you, I wouldn't want to even live without being filled with the love of Messiah Jesus. I wouldn't want to even exist on this planet. There's nothing here compared to the love of God. You have nothing compared to the love of God. I. If I could, I'd command you. I can't. But I tell you, taste and see that the Lord 
is good. Ask God to reveal Jesus to you. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask Jesus to live inside of you. And you are going to be filled, overflowing, with the love of God. You are going to have purpose in your life. And always remember, if it's not natural, consider it's supernatural.